I don't know how to explain it because I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I don't know if there's like a deep meaning that I'm supposed to understand. I was just like, I did not enjoy reading this. Welcome back. If you're new here, hi, my name is Daniela and I love reading. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I have recently moved to China. Yay! <laughs> so I thought this series would be postponed indefinitely until like I went back home and got some books and then came back with them. But that's not the case because if you have seen my um, Taobao shopping spree, I got the whole series. Hooray! Yay! I'm so excited. Also, again, if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. But in China, when you order the books, like all of these, for some reason, the second book is deemed like not appropriate and removed by the Chinese government. So I have the whole series except for book two. See, everything is like sealed and everything. I haven't removed the seal yet. But the second book is missing, so <laughs> there is that. The second book and the one missing from here was Television Was a Baby Crawling Towards That Death Chamber by Allen Ginsberg. And honestly, it's a good thing I already read it, so I don't care if it's missing. But also, I mean, I hated that book. If you watch my first um, Journey Through the Box series, you will see that I gave it one star because... I disliked it a lot. I don't know why they chose that one to be removed because it is true in there there's a lot of graphic depiction of like his anus and genitals but there's a lot of other books that kind of fit that criteria like the um, the veiled woman I think has four stories about like women and their sexual exploits and also I thought like where is it? Notes on Nationalism by George Orwell apparently passed their screening and is here, but that book didn't. I just, I don't really understand how it works. What did they think so inappropriate that they removed the book? But anyway, <laughs> let's go through them. Um, again, I'm going to read five books in this video. So we're going from number 11 to number 15. And the first book I'm going to read, let me put this back. The first book is this one here. So this is The Legend of the Sleepers by Danilo Kiss. And this says on the back, Sleepers awake in a remote cave and the ancient mystic Simon Magus attempts a miracle in these two magical otherworldly tales from one of the greatest voices of 20th century Europe. So I look forward to it. Um, so there are two stories here and I'll get back to you when I have read this book. So it may take a while, this whole series, because usually I had a lot of free time. Now I actually have a full-time job, so it may take longer for me to do this, but I'm so excited to have books to read. I'm just so excited. So this is the first book I'm going to read. Let's go. It's been two days since I filmed the intro and yesterday I read a lot. So let me tell you all about it. So the one I introduced was The Legend of the uh, Sleepers by Danilo Kiss. And this has two short stories in it. It has The Legend of the Sleepers and Simon Magus. And honestly, it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. It's just, mm. uh, I gave this a 1.5 out of 5 stars and that's, First of all, I'm not a religious person and this book is religion forward. Like that's all it talks about. Uh, in The Legend of the Sleepers, it's um, about these three people. Uh, there's Dionysus, uh, his friend, something with M, Malchus and a saintly shepherd, John, and his dog, Quitmere. And basically they're dead. I don't think I'm spoiling it. Uh, they're dead and there's, they're dead and laid in a cave. 
um, and worship there, but one day one of them wakes up, but not wakes up, just his conscience. And, and the story just revolves around um, him remembering how they laid them there. And I just, I don't know if I'm explaining this properly, but it just wasn't for me. And for the second story, Simon Magus, I don't know if it's this author's creation or if it's an actual religious figure, but it's basically this charlatan, I want to say, but not really. He doesn't believe in religion, but he can do all kinds of um, magic tricks and the apostles, especially Peter and Paul, I believe, aren't very happy about it and the end is just a mess and I'm like, what? But, you know, maybe some people like it. I didn't like this one, so 1.5 from me. I just, the I would have given it lower, but I quite enjoyed the second story. Not that much, but more than the first, so that's why I gave it this. So. This was uh, The Legend of the Sleepers. And then yesterday I went to get another medical check for my work and the subway there <laughs> took a very long time. So it was like an hour going there, an hour coming back. And in the meantime, I managed to finish two books. So um, thank God I took them with me. So good job for the thinking. Uh, but this is the 12th book, the Black Ball by Raph Ellison. Uh, and basically in this story, it says stories of belonging and alienation, violence and beauty, racial injustice and unexpected kindness from a writer of soaring emotion and lyricism. Um, this has four short stories. It has Boy on a Train, Himmy's Bull, The Black Ball and In a Strange Country. And very much like the back says, they're all focused about around the idea of race and the way black people um, were treated. And I like that it's from a black person's perspective, because if it was from a white person's perspective, it just wouldn't have made sense. Uh, the narrative happens in like 19,000s. I don't know exactly the date. Uh, I think in one of the stories they do say when, but it was very much when a racial segregation was still a thing because uh, take like the boy on the train, it's about this boy who together with his mother and his little brother are moving to a different city and they're sitting at the very front of the train where like the luggage is and it's very close to the conductor's room so a lot of coal and smoke gets into their cabin and it does mention that that's a, a blacks only area so um definitely racial segregation and with all the stories the black ball as well like all of them and i just i love the way they were written they're short but like straight to the point you get the idea you get the repression that they were feeling and i just i thought it was really really well written i gave this a three star um because I liked it, but it wasn't, I don't know, if it left me wanting for more, but I just, they felt incomplete. There are some short stories that are short, but they are complete. These ones felt incomplete, and maybe that's on purpose, maybe that's the way things are, because discussion about race are never fully complete, but I just... I felt like they were missing something, so that's why I gave it a three star, but I definitely recommend reading this book, reading the stories from this book, and it's just very easy to read, very fast, and they were really nice to read, so I do fully recommend. Uh, and so this I read on my way to the medical check, uh, and then on the way back, I read this one, the 13th book. This is Till September, Petronella, uh, by Jean Rhys, um, and I was uh, having fun with my friends because one of my best friends is called Petronella. So um, it's just, you never really see this name in real life, but I guess there's a book. Um, so this book has four short stories as well. It has The Day They Burned the Books, Till September, Petronella, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, and I Used to Live Here. And this book I gave four stars. I enjoyed it 
Well, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it more than the black uh, ball, but I liked the writing a little bit more, if that makes any sense. Um, I didn't really l like the, um, the story that the book was named after, which is the case with a lot of these books, because even with the black ball, I think the black ball was my least favorite story out of this entire book. But with this one, I... Uh, I really like the first and the third story, like the day they burned the books and Rapunzel, Rapunzel. And the fourth story as well, there's such a plot twist in like three pages. How long is this? Two pages. This is all I, I used to live here um, is, and there's a plot twist. So that's how good the author is. Um, <laughs> uh, but even Rapunzel, Rapunzel is great. It's just... Um, there's this feeling that this book and these stories make you feel. It's, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, <laughs> I, I just can't think of a word, but this is all of these stories center about women who just don't necessarily have a very particular place in the world, or at least they don't necessarily feel like they have one. And they're just kind of adrift and a bit lost and, it's just so, so well written. Um, maybe I like this more because I kind of related. Um, it's just, I don't know. I really liked it. Um, I just, I, I did. I That's all I can say. I really liked it. And yeah, I mean, did I read you the back? This says, four searing stories of women lost adrift down but not quite out, that span the course of a lifetime, from a Caribbean childhood to ruinous adulthood to old age and beyond. This was the 13th book, so yesterday I... So yesterday I managed to finish three books, which I am very proud of. Good job, me. Good job. Um, so let's take the next book. So I have 11, 12, 13. Ugh. The next book would be 14. Okay, let me find it, this one. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. The next book is Investigations of a Dog by Franz Kafka. And this is translated by Michael Hoffman. And on the back of this, it says, how does a dog see the world? How do any of us? In this playful and enigmatic story of a canine philosopher, Kafka explores the limits of knowledge. So this is the 14th book and I'm excited to give it a try. Let's go. Welcome back. So I don't remember what was the last thing that I said, but um, I have finished reading the 14th and the 15th book. So the fourth and the fifth book in this video. And I want to talk about them because um, I do have opinions, so let's get into them. I did, I do think I did mention this, but um, this is Franz Kafka, Investigation of the Dog, and this says, how does a dog see the world? How do any of us? In this playful and enigmatic story of a canine philosopher, Kafka explores the limits of knowledge. And here's what I have to say about this. For me, this was a one out of five stars book. I just... I didn't get it. I don't know if there's like a deep meaning that I'm supposed to understand. I was just like, I did not enjoy reading this. This is a very short book, but it felt like it dragged for ages. Um, this is told from a perspective of a dog and just the way he sees life from um, when he's like a puppy to um, adulthood and like getting old and dying and all that. And it's just the fact that there's this supreme being reigning over all the dogs and they don't really know how anything is i i'm not explaining this right but it's just i'm talking about humans i i think kafka talks about humans and um he kind of relates that i think he kind of relates that to um the way humans have a um one or multiple gods but we don't see them we just think they're there like everything we get and the same was for him as a dog and there's this humans humans are never mentioned in this story by the way it's just and just I don't know how to explain it because I didn't get it okay I I just didn't understand it it was um there were some parts 
that were fine, but the majority I did not like. Um, so yeah, this was investigations of a dog. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot explain it to you better, but frankly I need someone to explain it to me. So, one out of five stars and this was the fourth book of this video. And after that, um, I read uh, Clarice the Spectre, Daydream and Drunkenness of a Young Lady. Uh, this is the 15th book and this says, three intoxicating tales of three women, their secret desires, fears and madness from a giant of Brazilian literature. And I like this. It was very melancholic book, if you could call that. It's uh, like the back says the three stories of three different women and just the way they view life. But it's just like a tiny snippet of their life. Uh, like one of the stories, I think the first one, yeah, the one after which uh, the book is titled. She's a mother, but um, one day she just gets drunk and lets her inhibitions go but her husband's there to take care of her anyway and then they go home and nothing happens and I'm like okay it was it was nice but I felt like there was something missing the second story is about a mother who um again is on the tram and there she sees a blind person I believe uh, as she was going with the tram and she gets this kind of revelation but also fear that the world isn't in a way that she can control or there are so many things that need help or that are terrifying in this world frankly she over exaggerated her emotions but i get that a lot of some people do that and then um she goes to like a botanical garden and nothing happens in these stories that's the whole Point. It's about relaying the emotions that different women feel uh, in different snippets of their lives. But I just, I gave it, I don't know if I mentioned this, I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was nice, again, completely lacking something, don't know what, but it was a decent read, I didn't mind it. I feel like for me the third story kind of lifted the other two, if that makes sense. and. I am interested to read more about this author and I would recommend you pick this one up as well because it is interesting. You might like it, you might not, but I feel like it's better than Kafka. So um, don't come after me for saying that, but I would be interested to read more from this author. So this was the fifth book from this video. These are all the books. Let me take them out. Five books done and dusted. I'm so happy I managed to read all five of them um, and by that I mean I'm so busy these days that frankly I don't know how I managed to but I'm very proud of myself. Um, I would recommend you pick up some of the Penguin Modern books. They're fantastic. They're a great way to get into different authors that you might have never heard of and it's just it's small stories so they're more manageable so you kind of get the feel for the author and you see like yeah i want to read more about from this person or oh i hate how this person writes i'm never touching that um because there are a lot of those as well so um this is the end well the end of this episode of the uh, penguin modern quest journey through the box i am still loving the name this was the third video and Please come back for the fourth one. It will be soon, I hope, if I manage to read the next five. Um, but again, thank you for watching. Please give it a like. Please consider subscribing for more uh, videos like this. And please comment below if you read any of these books and which one did you like? Is there like one that you hated? Um, and if you have any, and I mean any recommendations of books, please let me know. Now, please be mindful that I am living in China and there are restrictions, uh, but for most books, I should be able to find them, hopefully. So yeah, that was it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I just give the earth my soul. Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls.